Hello guys and welcome back to another locomotive review video and today look what we have here. This is the gorgeous Acura Scale Hinton Manor and it is stunning. So this locomotive was bought for me uh, by my good friend Alfie um, and he's obsessed with manors. His favourite is Foxcote Manor um, which is a gorgeous logo. I used to have a Foxcote Manor. Um, but my two favourites are Hinton and Dinmore, so that's the only two I want. But um, yeah, he's he loves Foxcote Manor and stuff, so it's gorgeous logo. Um, and yeah, big thank you to him for this. We've done a couple of trades and we've got some trades going up further to cover this, whatever. Um, but you'll see that further down the line. So I have a dappled Dinmore Manor. And I now have an Acura scale Hinton Manor. That's always what I've wanted, one of each. Um, I have done a comparison video in the past between a Backman one, which was Foxcote Manor, a Mainline one, which was my old Hinton Manor, and uh, which Alfie now has also, and was with Dapol Dimmel Manor. So now what's going to happen after this is you're going to see a comparison between the Acura scale and the Dapol locomotives. Anyway, so let's get to it. So this is built by Acura Scale. It was their first proper steam locomotive. My first Acura Scale locomotive as well, even though I do have another one on pre-order, I will say. Um, and it's gorgeous. So we'll run through uh, all the detail, give it a bit of a running session and do a short video with it, as we normally do. I'll delve into the box and all what comes inside of that. Um, and then we'll... Uh, We'll make our judgment of it later on. And then, in the next video, I will compare this and the Dapple one. So, this is the massive Acura scale box that you get your locomotives in. And it is very, very cool. Um, it comes with a plastic outer sleeve, which is here. Um, but we don't need that at the minute. But to cut it, it's vacuum fitted, as they always are. And it'll not come off one-handed, will it? Nope. After you've uh, taken about half an hour to take the box off, you are greeted with lots of lovely foam. Uh, it's good that they're putting this into the norm now, because it takes a lot of the uh, vibrations out as well, so the locos are less prone to get damaged. You have a massive block of ice packaging, which you would expect. Um, and then you have all of these extra details. So you can see you've got another coupling there, which is an odd shape. Oh, there you go. It's an odd shape. It's for the front. Um for the bogey, but I won't be putting that on. A uh, load of other details as well. I'm not really sure what any of those actually are. Uh, God knows. But yeah, loads of stuff in there. And I believe there will be another one. Oh, yeah, etched nameplates for Hinton Manor. And a set of etched number plates, 7819, which is nice to see those. Etched number plates do look very, very, very nice. I don't personally fit them, but... Um, it's nice to have them. Uh, it shows the attention to detail, doesn't it? Oh, pop that back up that way, and then put the box lid back on the right way up. And then we'll show you the gump. So first off, this is the uh, maintenance brochure for the Acura Scale Manor, and it is very well detailed. It's lovely. You've got the exploded diagram there. And you've got the tender one, which is very sophisticated. And you have how to remove the tender body for any form of body shell removal. No idea. Why? Uh, that's the range of manners that you can get. You can actually get a Dinmore manner, um, but we got that from Dapple because it was a Dapple exclusive as well, so it's a bit rarer. Um, and these went out when Dapple Dinmore manner came out, so. That's another thing, and then it just tells you how to about fitting crew. And then you get this really lovely booklet. To be fair, if all the Kyosuke locos come with a booklet like this, then it's awesome because it's really, really cool. It tells you about all of the history on the class. You can pause that and read that if you want to do so. It says one of 23. The most they must have 23 steam locomotives planned because I believe they'll probably only do these for uh, steam locomotives. Uh, potentially. So yeah, you can pause any of that and read it if you may wish to do so. The 
The camera's decided not to focus. There you go. What you doing? Stupid thing. Told you about each individual class member that's in preservation. And what the situation is with them now. And that's about it. So yeah, that's all the gump. And it's really, really cool. Now for the exciting bit. And uh, that is running through the details. So I'll try and keep this as brief as possible. But as you can see, the shine on the locomotive is fantastic. Um, and that is because it's fully diecast. So it's diecast boiler, diecast running plate. And you can just tell. Um, but also, you have a matte finish smoke box, which is incredibly realistic and incredibly noticeable in a good way. It looks fantastic. Uh, you have a copper top chimney as well, which is lovely, and then you do have this painted into gold. Uh, well, goldy bronze, the safety valve on it. And the whistles, which I don't think are separately fitted, but if they are, they're plastic. And they just don't look super, super shiny. Uh, we'll come to that in the Dapol versus Secure Scale video. It's not necessarily important for now, but um, it still looks fantastic though. Uh, so you do have loads of separately fitted details. You've got all these lamp brackets, you've got the uh, smoke box dart, all the brackets across the running plate there, which looks fantastic with all those riveted details as well. You have the pre-fitted vacuum pipes um, and you have sprung buffers, but they're incredibly um, like sprung. It's very, very, you've got to give quite a bit of springy in that, which is, but it's, it's lovely. Anyway, uh, you have the sun's drain cocks at the bottom, which is really, really nice. You've got the handrail all the way across the side of the locomotive in the black and the green, which looks really, 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 really fine and looks fantastic. The joint's fantastic as well. You've got it all across the front. Um, the funnel looks to be separately fitted, as you can see with the line around the thing, but it makes it look realistic. And then you have the copper top as well, which looks fabulous. You can see it shining as well. Loads of uh, little small tiny details with the whistles. You've got the reverser rod picked out. You have all the underframe detail, which looks amazing. You can, there's loads of it as well. Um, it looks absolutely brilliant. Look at all that under there. That's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Got all this pipe work across the side. Uh, you've got splashes with the gold lining, which looks absolutely gorgeous. The wheels look fantastic as well with the, uh, the axles, which are, look ultra realistic. Um, a couple of rods look fantastic as well. Um, got all the moldy detail across the side. You've got all of the detail here. Um, oh, the safety valve bonnet as well, which you can see has moldy detail on the top, which looks really, really good. Loads of glazing on the windows uh, with the gold around the outside, which looks fantastic. And then you've got some at the front as well. And then you've got the D, whatever that means. Um, Dimmo Man's got one as well. Um, and then you've got 7819 printed gorgeous on the side of the locomotive as well. Um, looks fantastic. Um, check the other sides are the same. I don't know what that is. I've always wondered what that is. It's only on one side. Never ever knew. But it looks to be separately fitted, which looks really, really good. So, um, the, the, yeah, we've got loads of detail on this side as well. So you've got all the separately fitted detail, moldy detail across the side. The riveting looks fantastic. That's all part of the metal. Chassis, by the way, the metal running plate, which looks amazing. You've got all these little tiny handrails on the side of the cab as well, which looks fabulous. It's like it's so, so fine. It's incredible. Into the cab itself. Oh, that's the tender. Uh, into the cab itself, and it looks superb in there. It's difficult to get a view of it. Well, look at that. Got the wood panel effect floor. This does have firebox flicker. You've got the seats picked out in different colours. Got the reverser and all of the dials painted and picked out in separate colours. All the pipes looks amazing, and all the D uh, the glazing is really flush as well, so it looks super realistic. Uh, it looks fantastic in there. Love that. Right onto the tender, which is equally as well detailed. Uh, this is a GWR tender, and it's in the middle as well, unlike it is on some locos. It's great. Uh, you have the tender to loco plate as well, which is also. Movable. That's in its down position, but it does go up and down. Uh, it looks, looks great as well. It gives a really good effect to close couple. Um, the tender coupling system in this isn't the best. As you can see, there's some wires poking out and Stevenson Rocket's face. Hello! Um, so, it is a bit less tidy than the dapper one, but it's okay. Um, anyway, still works, obviously. Uh, so, the tender is 
in so the whole look is in group of green which is not that sophisticated delivery but it is lovely uh, but you do have the lettering picked out in all the colours the red and the yellow which looks fantastic printed beautifully on the side of the, the tender there the coal load which is removable uh, very removable in fact because I can nearly get my finger just under that and just remove it just anyway um, loads of detail in there you can see all of the molded detail you've got all of the uh, sort of controls on the tender um, and the, these little pub storage things um, which look great all the, look how fine all the detail is and all the, the moulding it looks superb and then you've got these little spiky things God knows what they are. I'm not that much of an expert, to be fair. I'm not an expert at all. Um, you've got this thing that looks like the end of a boob. Um, don't really know what it is. But then you do have the water tank thing, which looks fantastic. And, little gimmick, the lid opens. Why does that need to be a thing? But why is it also so awesome? Uh, it's got a little handrail on it as well, which looks fantastic. You have a little... Um, you have a little... I think it's a bob on the back. Uh, lamp bracket. You do have a uh, pre-fitted and separately fitted vacuum pipe on the back as well. You have the nice small coupling in the middle, which is all you need, which is movable, uh, really well positioned and nice and easy to pivot around corners. And you also have the sprung buffers on the back, but as at the front, they're actually quite stiff. But they do, they do spring. I can assure you they do spring. There you go. So yeah, uh, and then under frame detail you have the water trough picked out as well, you've got all the brake brakes there, the axle boxes which all look fantastic, the chassis is really well detailed under there as well, you've got the brake rigging, all that jazz, um, loads of moulded molded details with the springs, and quite a bit of separate fitted detail as well, it's not too bad, so it looks fantastic. Uh, the locomotive also has all of that as well, so it's got loads of separate fitted detail and moulded detail underneath all the pipes, and the brake rigging, and all the springs, which even detailed behind the wheel set which you normally would not need to know is there but they've done it anyway which looks amazing so yes uh just a sort of brief rundown of the detail on this locomotive as you can see there's a lot of it and it's one of the most detailed locomotives i think i actually have in the entire collection uh, it is also one of the very few that's almost completely die cast if you discount the tenders which are never die cast um, there's not very many with die-cast boilers and die-cast running plates in the collection um, to have both. Um, it is immensely heavy as well. So, let's pop it onto the track and see how it runs. So, there it is onto the track. And I believe this is a 3 pull motor with a fly but I could be wrong, could be a 5. But I remember reading somewhere there was a 3. Anyway, uh, it runs really well. Um, I have actually ran it. It's been ran in. Uh, it's been a while since I actually got this now. Um, we've had a lot going on, so it's been a bit delayed. But anyway, you're finally in the review, which is good. Um, so what we're going to do is run this. Uh, get some coaches uh, hooked up to it shortly. Uh, but we'll show you the slow speed first um, and how it runs and how smooth it is. So we'll uh, do our wheel shot as we normally do. Now I'm going to use the uh, the non feedback controller. Now as you can see, it doesn't really have a slow speed. It kicks in quite. There you go. It just kicks in, um, but quite high speed. Now it is smooth, very very smooth. So if we use the feedback, I'll be able to get a little bit of movement on that. So it's not actually. Uh, I think it's on a. Dead zone there on the points. There you go. See, it doesn't really do slow speed. It's not. Can't maintain a consistent speed. But yeah, it's. I mean, that speed, incredibly smooth. That's probably the slowest you are going to run it. Because um, it isn't a freight locomotive or anything. That is very, very slow. And it's very very smooth but it doesn't have that really really slow speed that's really really impressive and i think that is because it probably is a three pole motor but it also could be because it's got quite a hefty flywheel on it um the motor's just probably a bit too puny for that uh flywheel but who knows so i uh, will hook some coaches up with this and we will enjoy it running around the layout for a bit and there is Hinton Manor with the coaches ready to go. So, this whole train was actually supplied by Alfie because he also supplied me with these GWR coaches as well. Um, 
My intention is to get some more because there's too many breaks, the amount of non-breaks. Um, but that's not really an issue at the minute. So uh, let's watch into Managa then, um, which is gorgeous, by the way. Absolutely beautiful locomotive. Um, runs really beautifully as well when it is running and it doesn't have to run too quickly. For God's sake. Typical that my track decides it wants to play up. Anyway, let's get the loco running for a bit. I have a slight issue with the track, but other than that, everything's going swimmingly for now. And I say for now. It's just nice to sit and have a loco that runs around the layout without any problems. Because it's brand spanking new. I mean, I get problems with the camera not focusing. Oh yeah, that's where the, some of the locos are now stored, for now. Uh, that will be changing. But these are, this is for rolling stock. It's quite cool. Um, got my wagons in there. But I need to get a sideboard to store the locos properly, so that's the intention. So simply because I can't be bothered ne leaning over to get Shot to the locomotive. It's gorgeous, isn't it? And those coaches are lovely as well. It's nice to have some proper GWR coaches instead of those flipping BR ones, which I like, but they're not for this local. They're not for my great Western Westerners. So quiet. Yep, see the firebox flicker then, didn't you? At the time of recording, there are 59 locomotives in the collection. There is one that you a couple of you won't have seen yet because the videos are not ready to go out. Uh, but once they uh, once they get recorded, you will uh, see those. A couple of videos before that, though. I'm not going to tell anybody what any of them are. It's a secret. But I actually didn't know about this locomotive until uh, Alfie sent me a screenshot of it. I was like, cool, look at him getting in a Kyo Scale Manor. And then I noticed it said my address on the postage label, which was incredible. I was like, wow. So yeah, that firebox glow, it's incredible, isn't it? Oh, and the green B2 that is normally in the siding has gone. Alfie has taken uh, ownership of that locomotive. Um, as a thank you for this locomotive, uh, Hinton Manor. Uh, but there will be probably one more going to him uh, with a loco coming in its replacement but I'm not going to reveal anything about that yet because it's going to be a while off so no news yet don't need it so yeah it's just lovely to actually run this locomotive and it's absolutely gorgeous as well Right, and let's bring Hinton Manor into a stop. And bang, there we go. So, my first Akira Scale Loco and Akira Scale's first steam locomotive is wonderful. It's not perfect, and I will run through the differences and where each one does things better than the other in the Dapple uh, versus Akira Scale video. Um, but it's been great running this locomotive, really enjoyed it, and it's a lovely and definitely permanent member of the ever-expanding collection. 
and I'm so happy to have it because it was always a goal was to try and get the Kyrgyzko one to go again uh, to go alongside and against the Dapol one because uh, I've always wanted both. Um, so yeah, super happy. And the coaches look really nice as well. So hopefully we can get some more of those and get a bigger rake going. I do have six, but I didn't want to put six behind the locomotive anyway. Um, but it would be nice to get loads more for all the great westerners. So yeah, uh, what do you think of the locomotive? Please comment down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe with the notification bell on. It will be amazing to get this channel reasonably well. Um, everything is a lot less basic and a lot less... Over the, over the top, shall we say, than most channels. Like, there's no sophisticated editing or anything like that that goes into this. It's just me having fun with some railway locomotives. And if that's something you enjoy, then thank you for watching. Do all the usual gump, and I'll see you very soon for some more videos. Goodbye.